So this week we're going to do something we haven't done for a while and look at some university shenanigans. And what better place than the progressive city of Portland and the equally progressive institution, Portland State University. So certain students at Portland State University were so potentially triggered by a talk about diversity featuring James Damore, Peter Bogosian, Heather Haying and Helen Pluckrose that they tried to preempt it with their own talks. So the initial talk sponsored by Freethinkers of PSU featuring Damore and co titled We Need to Talk About Diversity was scheduled for February 17th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. In response, a coalition of groups from Portland State University, including the Associated Students of PSU, the School of Gender, Race and Nations, the Cultural Resource Centres, the Office of Academic Affairs, World Literature and Languages, Disability Resource Centre, Women in STEM, Student Group and PSU's chapter of the American Association of University Professors, put on three events from the 15th to the 17th of February, the last one at the same time as the Demore event. The first is Thursday the 15th, titled The True Story of Women in STEM, in which three women challenge misogynistic notions embedded in the discourse of their fields. The second is Friday, What Does Diversity Mean at PSU? It features an intentionally diverse group of students and faculty talking about diversity in academia and the workplace. The third event is a block party from 4 to 7 p.m. covering the same time as the Freethinkers event. So I guess this is a more subtle tactic than no platforming. Instead of getting events cancelled or shut down, we just try to divert you to another event or confuse the events. Now, the event did go ahead, and from the footage I've seen, they did get a good attendance, but there were some special people there trying to interrupt proceedings. This footage comes from the Q&A session afterwards. I haven't actually seen any footage of the initial talk, and the audio of this Q&A has a few problems, and that might be because of this incident. Portland State University hosted a panel tonight to talk about diversity in the workplace, and one of the speakers didn't get a warm welcome. A small group of protesters disrupted the event and were escorted out. Yeah, I would never have picked that the person with blue hair would have been the one to throw a tantrum. But that wasn't all the opposition this talk generated. One of the student organisers for Free Thinkers of PSU, Andy No, wrote in the Wall Street Journal two days prior to the event. I belong to Freethinkers of Portland State University, a skeptic student group. On Saturday, we're hosting a panel on diversity featuring James Damore, the Google employee who was fired last July for writing a memo expressing heterodox views about sex disparities in the company's workforce. We expected controversy, but we also got danger. The left-wing newspaper Willamette Week published an article with a false and inflammatory headline. Tech bro fired from Google for saying women are biologically unfit to be engineers. We'll speak at PSU next month. The subheadline inaccurately attributed to Mr. Demore the view that women can't do math. Actually, it's even worse than that. This hit piece barely contains anything even remotely true about Demore or his memo. The diversity mocking tech bro Google fired last year for writing a 10 page screed blaming women and their biologically inferior brains for Google's diversity problems is bringing his conservative message to Portland next month. Portland State University philosophy professor Peter Bogosian will lead a no holds barred conversation with James Damore at a campus event titled We Need to Talk About Diversity. The professor will evidently ask the more inventive questions like, are differences in distributions of traits between men and women socially constructed? And is diversity an intrinsic good? Anyone who paid attention to the fallout after Demore published his pop psychology takedown of women engineers already knows what his likely answers will be. And if you miss the delicate tech bro's metaphorical foot stomping because too many of his colleagues were either women, people of colour or gasp women of colour, the lawsuit he filed against Google today will give you a quick primer on his opinion. Opinions. Now, I have no idea about the circulation of this rag. They do have 177,000 Twitter followers, but the only explanation for such a demonstrably false caricature of Demore's memo is either the author hasn't read it or is just clearly dishonest. I mean, if there were any integrity at this organisation, there would at least be a retraction, if not censure, of this know nothing author. Anyway, back to the Wall Street Journal article. 
Campus activists called us misogynists, white supremacists, neo-Nazis. Ah yes, a good old game of bigotry bingo. A person claiming to work for Campus Audio Visual Services tweeted that he could break into our event through a back entrance and literally turn the whole building off. There were threats of violence. A Facebook user, it's not clear if he's connected to PSU, suggested he'd throw active grenades at Mr Demore on stage. Campus police took these threats seriously enough that they denied our request for a larger venue despite overwhelming interest. PDX Women in Tech, a local activist group, proclaimed itself disheartened and appalled that we were engaging in discourse without an opposing viewpoint. If they'd asked us, they'd have known we invited every tenured and tenure track professor from the Women's Studies Department and were rebuffed. Surprise, surprise. Meantime, the administration and student government have organised three counter-events to challenge the notion that women do not generate ideas, something Mr Damore has never claimed. Opponents also attempted to deny our event an audience by hoarding the free tickets and not using them. Now, later in the article, no notes. Last year, we invited the American Enterprise Institute's Christina Hoff Summers, YouTube host Dave Rubin, and PSU philosophy professor Peter Bogosian to speak about open inquiry and free speech on campus. The local Antifa gang incited dozens of students and other activists to disrupt our event, which they described as a fascist safe space. The event went off with only minimal disruption thanks to a heavy presence of campus police, bodyguards, and private security. Freethinkers of Portland State find ourselves confronted with a new sector religion called intersectionality. This doctrine conceives of human beings in terms of a good and evil binary of oppressed and oppressor, reducing individuals to a collection of group identities rated within a hierarchy of marginalization. Intersectionality's true believers tend to be far less tolerant than traditional religious believers with their sophisticated apologetics. To intersectionalists, scepticism is an existential threat. To question their beliefs, I've been told, constitutes debating someone's right to exist. The title of our event is We Need to Talk About Diversity. The proof is that our adversaries are so determined to shut us down. Well, it looks like Antifa and the easily offended at PSU will have their hands full again in March because Brett Weinstein, Christina Hoff Summers and Peter Bogosian will be returning to PSU and the title of that event will be called Victims, Victims Everywhere, Trigger Warning, Safe Spaces and Academic Freedoms. The event poster says the trio will discuss the future of free speech in academia, followed by a Q&A. The event is being hosted by the College Republicans and Turning Point USA. So if you're at PSU on March 5th, perhaps you'll be able to listen to and partake in an adult discussion about academic censorship. That is, of course, provided it's not sabotaged by some mentally disturbed blue-haired freak. I'll see you next time.